The net zero con will leave millions of citizens dependent on state handouts. It isn't a theory. It's an agenda. There is no climate emergency. On air 24-7. This is today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this live broadcast here on Monday. I'm your host, Patrick Kenningson. Thank you guys for rejoining us for this important program today. We're going to have a very important discussion as well right now uh, about the International Center for 9-11 Justice, the work that it's doing, uh, and particularly one individual who has a very long-running case uh, right now, and we're going to get some updates on this situation. I want to introduce Matt Campbell. Uh, he is the older brother of Jeff Campbell, who was a British citizen killed on September 11th, 2001 in the World Trade Centers. And while attending uh, various conferences and meetings over the years, also filing his own legal challenges in the UK. Matt Campbell has really discovered a lot about 9-11 and a lot that hasn't really made it properly into the public discourse on this. And besides uh, seeking justice for his family member, uh, Matt's also wanting to air the truth about what happened on 9-11. That's part of it. Um, this is an important subject. I know that uh, this is a long-running uh, controversy and a case, but uh, no better time than the present to get right down to it. I want to welcome onto the program Matt Campbell right now. Matt, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks, Patrick, for having me on. No, it's our pleasure, uh, Matt. And I want to go to also the headlines right now uh, on the website, the uh, International Center for 9-11 Justice. Uh, here we have family of 9-11 victim vows to keep fighting for a new inquest after the UK Attorney General denies them a second time. The UK's Attorney General's failure to correctly apply the law for a second time is beyond negligent says the center uh, it is in a cruel obstruction of our rightful pursuit of the truth about jeff's murder jeff your uh brother who was killed uh in september 11th matt uh first of all welcome to the program and uh for those of for those of our uh listeners and viewers on TNT who aren't familiar with your case. Um, if you just give, you, give yourself a brief introduction yourself and also um, this story. Yeah, so um, my brother, Jeff, um, was attending a conference on the 106th floor of the uh, the North Tower on 9-11. On and um, obviously, you know, he died that day. Um, Within a couple of months, I started to question things about um, what we were being told. Uh, in particular, it was um, triggered by uh, an article written by the late uh, John Pilger, who sadly just uh, passed away. And um, yeah, I, I, I've been fighting this now. I mean, we've got 22 and a half years on. Um, for about 10 years, I've been wanting to get my brother's inquest reopened. And so to, to say it briefly, Basically, his remains were identified. They were repatriated back to the UK, and along with nine other British victims, um, an inquest was held. This was back in uh, January 2013. Um, it was very much a kind of tick the box, rubber stamp kind of um, process. My brother's life and death was discussed in about three minutes. The whole inquest was done in about um, 100 minutes. Um, and, you know, very much just copy and paste of the official narrative. And within about a year of that, I just started to think, actually, there's a lot of evidence out there that points towards the fact that the towers were demolished and not just brought down by a, a plane and the, and the fires, et cetera. And um, knowing what I know now, which is basically no investigation was done whatsoever, which, you know, by law, the coroner is supposed to investigate how someone died, how they came about their death. Um, I mean, to just do a sort of cut and paste job from the 9-11 Commission report, um, which is shocking in itself anyway. Um, and so, yeah, a couple of years ago, um, we submitted a two and a half thousand page application to the coroner, and that's under the 1988 Coroner's Act. It's a mechanism by which families of um, deceased people where you believe that you know justice has not been done or the truth's not been told there's a mechanism to try and get that inquest reopened and so that's what we we tried to do um they sat on it for nearly two years and 
this is um, last June and turned around and said they're denying permission, even though we gave them abundant new evidence that wasn't considered at the first inquest um, and and also just insufficiency of inquiry. So they, they basically denied us then. We threatened uh, judicial review, which is a, a legal mechanism to challenge um you know what an authority has, has um made in, in terms of a decision uh surprisingly they backed down so we were at this stage this is last september pretty confident okay they've got to make a new decision it's going to be a positive one and you know my brother's inquest will we will be reopened fast forward to january beginning of this year um yeah they denied it for a second time and and that's pretty much you know where we're at right now um and i can go into more detail about what the next um stages but yeah i mean it's disgusting that they've you know we're talking now two and a half years from when we first made that initial application and this second denial there's not really anything new they're just making some more broad sort of statements as to you know why they're denying um us the right to have a new inquest so the british government effectively uh, the establishment the judiciary stonewalling you uh, on this issue on this case and uh, what what why do you think the i know they're giving their you know uh boilerplate reasons for it matt but wh why do you think uh there is a uh sort of fear by the establishment to reopen a case like this what what might they be afraid of um well i mean i think firstly it's just standard lawfare that they're, they're trying to exhaust you both time wise and money wise i mean that, that for sure is going on um i think the biggest concern they've got and this is without even going into the details of of what happened is is simply a family member is trying to bring into court um, evidence that contradicts an official narrative. And in this case, obviously, of something quite big, uh, be it 9-11. Um, I, I think it's a precedent they're very scared of setting um, and they're going to do everything they can to try and stop us getting um, this new evidence into, into a court. And, and so you, you've actually discovered some interesting things uh, over the years through this investigation, through your research as well, and also bringing in the research of others, um, something that would be considered new uh, into the, you know, if you add what you've discovered into the official 9-11 uh, report, the official story, it does change things considerably, uh, but also changes the liability, it changes the culpability from a legal standpoint. If you have, uh, let's say, other parties or foreknowledge of the event or uh, maybe a different explanation as to how the uh, Twin Towers came down that day, um, these are all questions that I think that are raised uh, through such an investigation. What are the most compelling pieces of evidence that you have uh, personally discovered um, throughout this process over these years, Matthew? Well, I think a, a lot of the um, evidence has come to light through the work of, like you mentioned other scholars and um, organizations like Architect and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Um, this is evidence of uh, the use of explosives. There's uh, traces of um, thermitic uh, reactions. Uh, you've got high temperatures, um, which you know can't be reached through normal office fires. You've got uh, just purely looking at the physics. You've got the collapse of the North Tower, which is obviously the tower my brother was in. Um, it fell at a constant acceleration for about the first four seconds. It, it can't be doing that if it's trying to destroy what's underneath it. It has to deaccelerate. Um, we have uh, numerous eyewitness testimony. That's from first responders. That's police officers, um, medics, etc., who were there, who were witnesses to explosions, flashes, bombs, etc. We have expert witnesses who, I said, bring the the, the chemistry, the physics, etc., as to why um, the towers couldn't possibly have come down. Um, you know due to plane impact and, and office fires. Um, I mean, there's lots of other stuff, you know, I've looked at it over the years, but I mean, the actual scope of an inquest is quite narrow. It is really only concerned with what caused someone's death. Um, so it doesn't really go into, you know, who did it or, you know, the, the larger groups of, of people who may or may not have had a role uh, in the attacks. Um, which in some respect is frustrating because there is a lot of stuff that's still being covered up today. I won't go into it, but you know, when you look at the, 
the five legal firms representing the families in the, the Saudi lawsuits, which, you know, right from almost day one, um, that was covered up by the US uh, authorities. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's just, it's narrow in scope, but it's something that we, A, have the mechanism, like I said, through this uh, 1988 Coroner's Act, there is a process, it's well-trodden path. Lots of families have done that when they've lost someone and they don't agree with what the official, um, you know, explanation is for their death. Um, and it's it's just frustrating that, you know, I'm still having to fight. And it's not just me, it's my my family as well, you know, 22 and a half years on. Um, and, and yeah, they are stonewalling and they are um, making it as hard as possible to get this back into uh, into a court. And I'm um, just looking at the reporting here. Uh, and I encourage people to go to the International Center for 9-11 uh, Justice. That's IC911.org, IC911.org. Hopefully we'll put that uh, on the Chiron uh, there just below uh, where our uh, images are right now. But um, this is an interesting passage here, which is relates to what you're saying, uh, Matt, which is the Solicitor General's only basis for the assertion they're making is to cite reports issued by the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology and to claim falsely that they represent a clear consensus view on the cause of the Twin Towers collapse. So uh, we see this quite a lot, Matt, with other controversies where you have institutions uh, that make initial rulings. Those rulings are challenged. The whistleblowers are then demonized. Uh, any contradictory or counter narratives are suppressed the uh, the opcw is a good example with the duma chemical weapons attacks uh in syria piers robinson part of the uh, research group that's been leading the opposition on that they've all been attacked uh and here we have anybody challenging nist or the united united states national institute of standards and technology so this ultimate deference to these institutions we see this in Britain a lot. They will defer to the United States, and that's it. Britain doesn't have any interest in independently finding out any facts or what happens. We're fine. The, this is what the U.S. says. We're good with that. Move on, basically. And I think your case kind of really exposes that sort of level of, I don't know, this kind of opine complicity um, that we see in this relationship between the British establishment and the U.S. It's amazing, Matt, that a relatively small case like yours in in the grand scheme of things exposes these massive issues that are just prevalent uh, in, in the international system. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, the, the frustrating thing about them actually citing the, uh, the NIST report is a, it wasn't even put in front of the coroner. So th their arguments for not allowing us to have a new inquest is, oh, but there's a report over here. I mean, that's not applying the law. That's not what the coroner, sh you know, should have done. Uh, and in any case, the, the NIST report only goes up to collapse initiation. It doesn't actually go into what caused the towers and how they actually came down and ultimately how my brother was killed. Um, so they're kind of I mean, they're deferring to, yes, a, a, an official body, but it has no relevance whatsoever to certainly the new evidence that we put in front of them in front of the uh, the attorney general because nist doesn't look at or even acknowledge or discuss um the, the possible use of ex explosives um i mean there's there's you know I'm, I'm sure you've read the um the the response that they gave us i mean they're, they're talking about our evidence not being credible but in the same breath they're saying but we're not going to um have any experts actually look at your evidence they've not given any rational uh examples of why our evidence isn't credible it's it's pretty much more of what they did last june um which is it's it's frustrating um i'm just hopeful that you know we can raise enough funds to apply for judicial review again um and you know hopefully this time they'll either let us go to court because i think we'll have better luck there than them constantly hiding behind these decisions that are you know unlawful and irrational that the attorney general seems to think they can get away with with doing and making you know time and time again you know I, I think a lot of the evidence especially in recent years is very compelling uh you look at the work of dr leroy halsey from the university of alaska fairbanks on the building seven 
phenomenon. And, you know, from a, a structural engineering point of view, from a scientific point of view, uh, an exhaustive study, the conclusions are uh, pretty clear uh, at the end of that. And I have yet to see anybody to properly refute um, these findings uh, by Holsey uh, and al also his other colleagues from the organization, which you mentioned before, uh, Engineers and Architects for 9-11 Truth. Um, there haven't, hasn't really been any real uh, ability to refute those claims. And the evidence that they're putting forward, the analysis they're putting forward, certainly in a court of law, uh, that is should be in a, or an inquest, an inquiry should be concerned with the facts uh, in order to get the historical record correct, especially on such an important event like 9-11 that transformed uh, the geopolitical landscape. Uh, it transformed the Middle East uh, for maybe for, for generations. Wouldn't you want to get the truth? Wouldn't you want to get to the facts eventually matt eventually those facts are going to be accepted as the, the the consensus story but not now not yet but eventually they will history shows that eventually the truth will come out your 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 thoughts on on that side of things i mean yeah very much so uh, eventually the truth will come out um you know i hope we we're at that point now um, it seems you have to sort of have a minimum sort of 20 years. I look back at historical cases of, say, Bloody Sunday, um, Hillsborough, etc. You, you do need a passage of time, um, you know, before what probably family members were screaming out loud way back from day one, you know, finally get, gets heard. Um, I mean, you mentioned Building 7. I mean, it is part of our application. Obviously, my brother wasn't in that building. I mean, the evidence is compelling. But... You know, what's, what's really frustrating, and I sort of sense it from my barrister a lot, is um, the level of evidence or the amount of evidence we have, we, we're so far above a kind of threshold that would normally be required in order to, to trigger a new inquest. We can absolutely 100% prove that there was no inquiry whatsoever into how my brother um, died. And it should be just straightforward. We shouldn't be having to have this this battle in the legal system. But like I said, I mean, I'm more confident that actually once we go into the high court, um, you know, that's that's where we will get some semblance of justice because their hand will be forced. Um, you know, the attorney general can kind of hide. They can do these letters which don't really make, you know, the, the public light of day. Whereas in a court of law, that's everything's going to be on record. And I, I just I'm more hopeful that we would actually get um more justice there but it is it's a long process and like i said you know our first step is to get this judicial review of this um you know frustrating second decision that's denied us again certainly i think i think you're, you're not alone uh, matt there's a lot of other people victims families there's a lot of residents in new york americans people around the world that want to see that happen um, and i think your your case is a really important part of that but before we uh before we wrap this segment up matthew i want you to just to just to give us an idea, give us give us your thoughts. What what has this been like? This long running battle. What has this been like for you personally and your family? Because this has been going on now for over two decades. Um, if you can just talk about that, um, I think a lot of people would really like to to know more about that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, within a couple of months, I started questioning things. I, I absolutely hated what was going on in Afghanistan, and then obviously Iraq, which was just made up stuff for reasons why uh, there was war in Iraq. Um, and I found it particularly hard just because the more evidence came out, and this is not just focused on um, how the towers came down. This is you know, other things like the CIA actively protecting two of the hijackers, um, you know, the, the involvement of Saudi intelligence, Saudi government, et cetera, which uh, you know, bit by bit has come out over the years. It's frustrating. And, and I found it really hard the, the first 10 years, I'll tell you the truth. Um, feeling that you know i mean i felt completely powerless i didn't know what to do um you know compounded by the fact i'm over here in the uk um you know all the legal stuff all the the families that were vocal seemed to be you know us based um and i and i think it it really it was when i i, I guess i went public with how i felt back in um 2013 and i i did a um a few documentaries um and yeah, I just connected with people and then I, I kind of thought, actually, no, there is a way, you know, of fighting this. There is evidence out there. Um, it's just it's that thing of, you know, like I said, in lawfare, it's it's getting 
the funds necessary to to mount these kind of challenges because it's not easy and and for me the only way to do this in any way it's ever going to be done is through the, the legal system whether you like the system or not and whether you think it's geared against you um you know it's 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 all i i can do really i mean what do they say the um uh, the, the wheels of justice turn very slowly but they grind exceedingly fine i do think there'll be justice eventually it just might take a long time um unfortunately time isn't on our side um we have it's it's time sort of um locked in that we have to respond to this decision by the um i think it's the third of april which for obviously the barrister needs to do work etc and we need to raise the funds we need to raise the funds by the end of this month basically march 1st um otherwise we won't be able to mount this legal challenge so i mean the pressure is on to try and we're trying to raise a scary amount of sixty thousand pounds um but it's so frustrating that we should have be forced to do this again um but um you know it, that is lawfare there's not not much else we can do i'm just hopeful that you know someone uh and people well, many people will will chip in and and help try and get this you know my brother's inquest reopened and this evidence that no one's ever um, seen in a court of law and, and exposed stuff once and for all. And, uh, and uh, where, where's the best place for people to go to support uh, your campaign? Matt, I know the uh, International Center for 9-11 Justice website, uh, um, uh, ic911.org. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah uh, 91 Justice. Yeah, there's uh, a link underneath Justice there. Which, sorry, Patrick, yeah. There's a link underneath there that takes you to uh, a crowdfunder um, website where, um, yeah, I mean, I, it, the easiest thing is to go to ic911.org and you'll see a link to the uh, inquest and, and raising funds um, for that. But like I said, you know, we've got four weeks basically, or just shy of four weeks now to try and raise this, this money. So pressure's on. For now, let's just take a break with uh, TNT, today's news talk. I'm Patrick Kennington, your host. We'll be right back. <laughs> 